All right, good morning. It is, it is March 11th, 2024. It's the Monday after spring break. And I know it's sad the spring break is over, but we only have seven weeks of school and 18 class meetings left till summer break. So got all that to look forward to. All right, let's get into this. We are still working on this AX equals X prime two by two system. Uh, we've done case one and case two, which are real and imaginary. And now we've got case three here. So, so case and let's just look at a system here pluck this out of your book it's got some fractions no big deal because because um, <clears throat> the eigenvalues here are minus one and minus one so now case three is where we have repeated roots and so and so here's a definition definition we say we say in this case that r equals minus 1 has has algebraic multiplicity equal to 2 cuz it's repeated twice so if we had a 3 by 3 and r had been minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 we would say that r has algebraic multiplicity equal to three. And we're going to uh, explore this at length after we get through, after we get through this, um, this section. Okay, so when you look at, um, when you find the eigenvectors or eigenvector, when you find the eigenvectors corresponding to r equals minus one in this case, we only get one, right? So we do our, we solve, what do we solve here? We solve a minus r i zeta equals zero. And after solving that system, we get the eigenvector, we get the eigenvector two, one. I won't bore you with the details, so. This is the only eigenvector that corresponds to r equals minus 1. So here's our second definition uh, with respect to this problem. We say, we say that r equals minus 1 has geometric multiplicity equal to 1, because there's only one eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue r equals minus 1, which has algebraic multiplicity equal to 2. Now, this is a concept, this key concept we're going to explore at length soon, this uh, relationship between algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity. So just hold on to that thought. This is one of my favorite things in the world. And we're going to come back to it. We're going to come back to it uh, at a later date. Here, right. So in our example, we have one like an eigenvector. So our first solution, just like before, is going to be that eigenvector multiplied by this. Right? Okay. So what's our second solution? A guess would be this. The guess would be 2, 1. Remember, this is just like the repeated case before. Uh, what we do, we use variation. No, what we use? Um, undetermined, co no, what's it called? Uh, reduction of order. And we picked up a second solution, t e to the minus t. And we, th and we think, we, we, we guess based on what we know from before, we deduce that uh, this is the second solution. And unfortunately, it isn't. Unfortunately, it isn't. When you, when you take 
a times x2, that should be subscript. Let me get my notes out here. When you get, when you get a times x2, you end up with the, with the solution minus 2t e to the minus 2 minus t e to the minus t. And when you look at x2 prime, you do in fact pick up this vector, but you also pick up you also pick up this. And these two should be equal and they're not. So our guess isn't quite right. So, so the guess we're going to use here is, is the vector zeta times t e to the minus t plus some other vector gamma e to the minus t. That way it's going to, that way it's going to, um, it's going to match this vector here. And so the question is, how do you find gamma? All right, so now I'm going to switch over to, I'm going to switch over to the general case. To the general case here. Um, well, this is case 3A, okay? So here's the general case. We have we have ax equals x prime. R is our only eigenvalue. So it has algebraic multiplicity one. Sorry, two. And zeta is our only eigenvector. So it has geometric multiplicity one. And so we know, we know that x1 equals zeta t e to the rt is a solution. And then we're gonna guess that our second solution is gonna be zeta t e to the rt plus gamma e to the rt. And we want to find out how to get this gamma. So let's just do it. Let's plug, let's plug this, let's plug this x2 into our system. So we have we have a times x2, which is a times zeta t e to the rt plus gamma e to the rt. And then x2 prime, we gotta do some work here. This becomes um, zeta. I got to be careful here because you have to do the product rule. So it's zeta e to the rt plus zeta rt e to the rt plus gamma r e to the rt. Okay. So. Divide through by e to the rt, and you are left with a gamma t, sorry, a zeta t, plus gamma on the left equals, equals zeta plus zeta rt plus gamma r. Okay. Okay, so this might be hard to see. Um, this might be hard to see, but this minus this equals zero, right? A zeta t minus zeta r t equals zero because if you factor the t out, you get A zeta minus r zeta that equals zero since r and zeta are the eigenvalue and eigenvector corresponding to a. So these drop out. So this becomes zero. So what you're left with, oh, this should be an a. Distributive property Pullman. Okay, now we got it. So we have 
a gamma back to yellow. So we're left with we're left with a gamma equals zeta plus z oh that's zero. I got off because of that. Zeta plus gamma r. We're almost there. Subtracting we get a gamma minus r gamma equals zeta. And when you unravel this, you get a minus r i gamma equals zeta. And this is what we need. So in order to find gamma, all we do is take this matrix, which while you're doing the problems you've already found, and set it equal to the eigenvector you found in the, um, in the first round. And I'll make a note here. Note. Gamma is not an eigenvector. It's just something that makes the solution work. So, all right, let's go back to our problem. All right, we have, uh, where is it? Right here. We have minus three halves, minus a quarter, one minus a half, uh, x equals x prime. We know that r equals minus one has algebraic multiplicity. Two. So when you look at A minus Ri, you get the matrix minus one half, one minus a quarter, a half. And if you use this to find zeta, which I've done already, you get that zeta equals two, one. Okay, so you do that computation first. Now, if you want to find gamma, what you do is you take A minus Ri, which is sitting right there, times gamma, got to get all my Greek straight, times gamma and set that equal to zeta, the one we just found. So now we get the system minus one half, minus a quarter, one, one half, and then we're setting this equal to 2, 1 to solve for gamma. Okay. If you've done this right, some multiple of row 1, I'll just do it. Minus 2 row 1 plus row 2. That's not right. Do it right, Pullman. All right, minus 2 row 1 gives you a new row 1. So let's do that. So we have 1 minus two, minus four, and you have minus a quarter, a half, one. <clears throat> so now you go what? A quarter row one plus row two gives you new row two. All right, that's better. So 1 minus 2 minus 4. This goes 0. That goes 0, and that goes 0. All right, and that's what's supposed to happen here. So what we have here is that gamma 1 minus 2 gamma 2 equals negative 4. So gamma 1 is 2 gamma 2 minus 4. So gamma, which is equal to gamma one comma gamma two, we set our free variable as gamma two. So we go two gamma two minus four. And when you unravel this vector, you get gamma two times two one plus minus four zero. Notice, notice that this is zeta. 
So it turns out that this vector becomes redundant in the solution because it's multiplied by e to the t. And so this guy that's left over here becomes gamma. So our second solution, our second solution is 2, 1, t, e to the minus t plus minus 4, 0, e to the minus t. And finally, the solution solution is C1, oops, I turned it into a vector. The solution is C1, 2, 1, e to the minus t plus C2, uh, 2, 1, t, e to the minus t plus minus 4, 0, e to the minus t. Note where the C2 is. It's in front of x2. You don't pick up a C3 over here. Okay, so this is, this is case 3. Part A, and that's where um, R has algebraic multiplicity equal to 2 and geometric multiplicity equal to 1. Um, case 3A, part B, will be um, where well, they're both equal, but we'll do that on Wednesday, and I'll show you how to do the phase portrait. So phase portrait... to come. All right, hope you all had a great break. I will see you hopefully tomorrow, Tuesday, come to my office and chat, or I'll see you on Wednesday in class.